Okay, so it's winter now. You've harvested your best ears of corn and you've turned them all into hundreds and hundreds of packets of seed derived from each ear. What's the best thing to do now? Well, one thing we can do is germ test each of those ears to make sure we find the ones that have the best vigor and which germinate best under cool conditions if we wish to treat them that way. Um, germ testing helps us figure out which of the ears were actually fully mature and are ready to go in the spring. This little video will show how we can do germination tests in our homes with a large number of ears. About a hundred years ago everyone was growing open pollinated corn and saving seed. One textbook, uh, this one by Bowman in 1915, explains most of the procedures necessary to grow corn in Iowa, in this case, and they also show how to germination test all of your ears to make sure you've got the best matured, most vigorous corn seed to go back into the field. I'm going to show an adaptation of this using some things I could easily pick up at the uh, hardware store. A hundred years ago or so, Bowman and the USDA and Extension were explaining how to do germ tests at home using boxes made of wood filled with wet sawdust or uh, rag dolls which were wrapped up pieces of cloth with seed inside. I've got a polyethylene storage box here. It's filled with a potting medium about an inch which is moistened and I'm going to use this as my germination box. It's about uh, three feet by uh, one foot or so and should hold about uh, uh, the seeds for about a hundred ears. Over top of the potting medium I have some claws cut and marked with permanent marker with rectangles uh, where seeds for each of the respective ears from packets is going to go to be uh, germ tested. I have three boxes and so I can test 300 uh, ears at a time. Each of these rectangles is for me a one and a quarter by three inches which ought to hold 10 to 15 seeds without too much trouble. Bowman and the group suggested that all the seeds be laid down with the germ side up a somewhat uniform pattern so they would all fit nicely. Oops. Back a hundred years ago would be using muslin that had been marked with a blue crayon to lay out all of the rectangles. I've used some old sheets here because I had them and I used a black sharpie which they didn't have at the time and it looks like that should work pretty well. For a germ test normally what we're going to do is finish laying out all these seeds which as you can see take some time and then once they're all laid out we're going to roll out a damp cloth, doesn't have to be marked, just to cover things over. Uh, Bowman and Company would have then covered that over further with a couple more inches of damp sawdust oops, in order to uh, keep things moist and dark. I'm going to just use some old towels that I happen to have once filled and covered and ready to go, the, uh, the box should of course be in a place where it's warm enough to germinate. So for a normal germination test where we're not stressing the plants, we would put the boxes in a place at 65 to 75 degrees in general, like the warm soil we plant corn into, and then look to see after a week or so uh, what sort of germination we've seen. Uh, for this sweet corn test that I've got going, I'm actually going to stress these. I have about 250 ears and I don't want to have to evaluate all of them right now in the field and I do want to evaluate them right now for cold germination. And so 
Well, it's hard to see those blue kernels, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to put this box down in my garage where it's about 50 degrees and stress these seeds very well. Here's one of the trays filled. It took a long time, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, 256 ears in about 5 hours. But there's more steps to come. So what I'm doing next is to gently roll out some damp fabric over the top. Try not to disturb all this beautiful layout of seeds which took me so very very long. And this will provide a buffer layer over which I'll put some additional layers. And then off they go uh, into the basement for my uh, cold germination test. Whereas for most of us, we'd put this in a nice warm place for a, a normal germination test. Okay, it's been two weeks now since uh, I set up the germination test. I did uh, leave the covers off, at least cracked, so we'd have some air movement. And I did add extra water one time, about one week into the germ test. So let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to uh, very carefully unroll this uh, wet rag cover uh, in the direction um, that most of the roots are growing, which seems to help keep most of the seeds from sticking to the cloth, which you can imagine might be an issue. So I'm just going to carefully keep rolling this here. And the moldy kernels, of course, are sticking pretty badly. But mostly things look pretty good. I think you can probably see there's some difference here as to which ones look mostly dead and which ones are germinating well, and this is why we do these tests, to identify those ears that were well matured and have good strong seed. That one went one up there. <laughs> okay. So I'll just finish unwrapping all of these and then we'll take a quick look at them. So after two weeks of 50 to 60 degree temperatures, uh, what does this sweet corn look like? Well, let's take a, a nice close-up here. Let's we'll dive right in and look at some strong ones. Uh, here are a couple of families. Uh, each of these have very long roots. They also have shoots extending about a quarter inch or so. Uh, looks like every seed has germinated and the shoots are coming along. That's quite strong. This family here, on the other hand, has no germination whatsoever. Uh, not very good for much. Here's another one much like that. Uh, there are some others, uh, such as this family here, where we've got one strong germinated plant and a couple others that were weak and died and the others didn't do anything. So that ear probably got cold before it was uh, all the way dried down. And uh, yeah, that seed's not worth very much. Probably too late to mature here. So what I'm going to do with all of these is go through and score them for their uh, percent germination and how well the uh, shoots were coming along. And when I get ready to plant, I will throw out all of the families that were very, very weak. I will just keep the strong ones and then have already made a selection for uh, cold uh, condition germination and strong germination. So uh, this should greatly help my project. And I hope you have a good luck. Uh, as I've had here with uh, testing your ears uh, for your projects.